Long, long ago, I started theorizing. As soon as I saw this Feast of the Wild level 5 card, I knew this would be something great. And so slowly I put together and theorized and tried to figure out what are some of the best level 5 warriors in the game. They could come together to make a deck. And essentially the answer was kind of, because there definitely is gas here, but a lot of this was based around opening Feast of the Wild and being able to turn your monsters into Isolde. And without Isolde, this deck kind of just becomes directionless. It's a lot harder to resolve or to build an, an actual board and it's not even like the boards we were building were anything crazy as you could probably tell there are no omnis here that we really have access to and um it was mostly based around this battle guard cadet who could summon it you know you could summon it off the easel by milling one and then it could search feast of the wild level five which was great but then it didn't really get much past that maybe you got you know Pleiades plus like nash knight plus maybe apo and that would be your end board. No spell and trap negation, almost no sauce. I was almost on the, the Mutamorphosis tech, but I, I didn't theorize this deck much around the time the Mutamorphosis came out. Before Maze of Millennia, as you can see, I'm not even playing any of the Flame Swordsman support, so that's how long it's been since I've touched this deck. And so in TCG, some of the TCG exclusives out of Legacy of Destruction, one of them was this card called Battle Guard Echo. So on search, I mean, on activation, it searches a level five Earth warrior monster from deck to hand then you drop one and then if a monster is returned from field to hand you get to add uh you get to activate one of the effects to either add one of the battle guard trap cards to your hand or you can book a moon a monster non-targeting and i immediately wanted to just shove it into this deck but it didn't really do much for it like you could search your warrior chief right because a warrior chief she you know uh, summons herself and then she can search polly and polly can then search like idaton and then idaton it can search a level five warrior on fusion summon so you know some of your star warriors like kaiza or like kaiki or even joker's knight which joker's knight is amazing because it summons itself and it mills jack's knight which sets you up for feast of the wild level five like crazy um, it can search Red Layer if you want to go for Magna Liger with its quick effect live, then going for Red Layer helps as well. And there's a lot of different cards that you can go for in this deck. I found that it didn't do enough for the deck. It just kind of was there. It, it was an option, but the Warriors 5 Star Warrior deck was not a thing. This is just to show you guys what the Warriors 5 deck was really capable of, right? So we... We can go for like Ready Fusion, Polly. We go for Jax Knight. And because the Giltia, oh. Because the Giltia was summoned off of Ready Fusion, you can bring it back off Beast of the Wild level 5, so that's why I really like going for it. Now, Isold summon out uh, Battle Guard Cadet. Cadet searches another one, and this card does, is not once per turn. Magnum the Reliever can draw us more cards. We can go Feast of the Wild. Again, we can go for Pleiades. We can Tribute Summon because we didn't use our normal summon yet. And we could have made Magna Liger here, but instead we're going to go into Nash Knight. And what Nash Knight does, it basically gets a quick effect swallow any monster on field, non-targeting. So that's that's why Nash Knight is, is a really good monster to end on. And then um, basically it gets to Chaos Exceed Overlay into any of the C100 and over exceeds. So C107, C101, C104, whichever one you want to go into, you just attach the smaller version of it with Nash Knight's effect. And then C Exceed Nash Knight can overlay into the bigger one um, on your follow up turn. So, like, it's not amazing, right? That's this is really you're really only staring down three interruptions. Like I could um, link away Magnum plus Isold to go for like SP, and you're now you're staring down like four interruptions or um, whatever it may be. But th this was like the extent of what the deck could do. But what I did find though is UA actually thrives. We are on the I know it's 420 and. We are smoking on the copium of Battle Guard Echoes. It, it is not single-handedly going to bring UA back. I don't even know if it's going to make UA playable again, but it definitely makes the deck better if it resolves. And the beautiful thing is that it's not just Battle Guard Echoes, but we also got the double die, where if we have no monsters, we summon a level four warrior from deck. And if you know about Libero Spiker, you know Libero Spiker is basically the best 
uh, UA in the deck. It can, uh, during your opponent's turn, summon any level, any UA monster from your deck with a different name than the one, than the one you sent back to deck. And so basically, if you open this plus any level 5 or higher UA monster, which is like most of them, then you get to um, summon this and then immediately shuffle it back and summon back, summon out one of your UAs that could possibly do something, like Player Manager, who can skill drain the field, or Block Backer, who can, who's really effective against cards that summon multiple monsters at once, not really good against Lynx, or you can go into the very simple Perfect Ace and start to set up some Omni Negates against your opponent. And so, yeah, and then it's not even just that, but it's also the fact that you can target a warrior, then summon another warrior from a deck or graveyard with an equal or lower level. So Perfect Ace is, is a soft once per turn. It's not a hard once per turn. So if you can target a Perfect Ace, either summon another Perfect Ace, or you can target um, Player Manager because it's really easy to summon, summon like any UA from deck, it becomes a lot more effective. And the fact that it summons from graveyard as well allows the deck more recursion than it had previously. Because if you go for some like rival rebounder, who normally was the only uh, follow up for the deck, normally he was the one that was bringing back your, your UA monsters. Now you kind of don't need him because you can go double die and then uh, rival rebounder and I mean, you could double die into Rival Rebounder and then target, you know, another UA in Graveyard and summon that thing back. And it also summons from Hand or Graveyard, actually, so it, it doesn't target. So it's just two really like half decent cards that seem like they can make UA a lot better. And I know when people were looking at this card, it's like, oh, Amazon has got support. Motherfucking War Rocks getting support, and War Rocks are probably going to be a lot better too. Uh, Go keys are probably going to be a lot more effective with this card, but no other deck can utilize this card's continuous once per uh, trigger effect for once per turn like UA can, because that's going to be what separates UAs from other decks that may utilize this battle guard card. So what do I mean? So let's just start with, with keeping it simple. What does battle guard echoes offer to UAs? Well, UAs already have a card that's pretty good at being discarded. And that's the biggest thing you're going to find about um, UAs, is that you're going to need a lot of discard fodder. So, uh, discarding a card like UA Penalty Box is going to be pretty good for allowing you to get your strategy going. You can go for something like Hyper Stadium, search Libero Spiker. Perfect Ace can then summon itself by bouncing the Libero Spiker. And then now you can trigger Battle Guard Echoes to then search you um, another card. And then... You can special summon Libero Spiker. You can either keep the Perfect Ace on field to discard one to have it as an Omni, or you can go Libero Spiker to summon any UA from deck, whether it be Blockbacker or whatever you think is best for the situation. So to take it one step further, now what does Double Die offer us? So let's say it's the same scenario. Now we're going to go for something like Signing Deal to go for Slugger, just so we can have a level 5 or higher in hand, because when we go for our Double Die, And what's great about Battle Guard Howling is that it's not really a broken card, but it's just a funny card where if they try to target Perfect Ace for an attack, like if they try to like big brain it and just attack it before they start to play their turn so that they could play around the Omni Negate, Battle Guard Howling will kind of make it hard for them to do that. And so with a card like Double Die, because we control Perfect Ace, we could summon any level four or any level five or lower warrior from deck or graveyard, which we're gonna bring out Spiker. And thanks to the Slugger that we summoned from deck, we get to go for some like Blockbacker. And Blockbacker is pretty good against any monster that they may special summon because we can change it to defense and then negate its effects. So the only issue with Blockbacker is that it was made before Link Era and it doesn't stop Link monsters. It has to be able to switch the monster to a different battle position. So that means Link monsters are basically immune to its effect. But anything else that they summon, you know, Links aren't the the only thing in the game and you still have perfect gates to play around stuff like that and when you bounce your cards to hand battle guard echoes will get you cards to discard for perfect ace or if you already have a card that can be discarded if you time your libero spiker better you can start to book a moon monster so now it turns from like two interruptions to three thanks to battle guards echoes and just the immense amount of resources you can get from this card you, like that's why i it's, it's kind of like hard because drawing Howling is kind of ass and Rage is even worse. So 
the question is, do you want to keep searching Howling? Um, or do you want to search as many Howlings um, as possible to start? Or do you want, or would you rather start Book of Mooning your opponent's monsters so that you could potentially play around different situations? So now I'm going to mess around with something like Rollback, right? Because Rollback basically allows us to resolve Double Die twice in the same turn. So, you know, come their turn. And you can you can wait till main phase if you're gonna like if you have no monsters you can wait till main phase because uh, libero spikers only during main phase so this means that like if you summon this too early and they may have like a imperm or something you wouldn't be able to like chain it uh, chain the libero spiker to play around something like the imperm or I know people are even playing starting to play chalice now you saw that guy at the YCS the pearly player playing chalice yeah. It, that that's a thing so just you know you want to summon him during main phase just to be careful right so you can go for block backer and then uh libero spiker will get bounced to hand by part of his effect echoes will then uh trigger here to um to search us and then we can also go for uh rollback and graveyard target our own double die and now we get to resolve the second effect to summon a uh earth warrior from deck with an equal or lower level so now that means we get to search Perfect Ace, and we get to go for Battle Guard Howling, and we 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 opened in like objectively more awkward hand in this scenario because it was like Echoes Die plus Rollback, and it's like there was no way for us to play that during our turn, but it, it's basically Double Die allows the UA to start up on the opponent's turn if you don't open the cards to start up on your turn, so. Yeah, and then just, just showing that Blockbacker can negate any effect uh, on a special summon monster. And, you know, Perfect Ace is an Omni. You can drop Battle Guard Howling. And then, you know, next turn, you can keep going. And yeah. Oh, and also because it's non-targeting, if they have any sort of effect that summons, you can you can book a moon that monster. So now the Perfect Ace that would have had an Omni negate is now cooked so now to mess around with some test hands i was playing feast of the wild level five initially but i don't know i'm i'll let you guys see see for yourself because it's nothing crazy and then we get the double summon with the uh hyper stadium and th this is why like hyper stadium isn't bad it's not a bad card because it searches and then it could potentially give you a double summon it's just the fact that you need to play both the hyper stadium and the ua stadium and the fact that hyper stadium and ua stadium cannot be on the field simultaneously like if hyper stadium was like a, a continuous spell card rather than a field spell it would be a lot better because then every turn you can get two summons and that would be more effective at letting Stadium be able to, to do a strategy while letting Hyper Stadium be able to give you those extra summons and have a reason to be played at more than one copy. Um, but because both of them are field spells, it makes it really awkward to the point where it's like, Hyper Stadium is like a one-time thing. It's like, why, why do we have to downgrade the Stadium just so we can keep our game plan going? Because regular Stadium is just way better if you know, if you can resolve the effect to search, right? Like, if you can get multiple summons in the same turn, multiple normal summons, and you can get multiple searches, that's a lot better than Hyper Stadium, which is only useful once. So, it just feels really awkward. But, I mean, I get it. It's also a FA card, but even FAs have, like, 10 different field spells already. They don't need another one. So that's why it just feels weird. But here's the last replay, and now I'm gonna show you guys the power of Morganite in the deck because obviously any card that lets us summon twice is gonna be pretty good. And this is kind of an argument for not playing hand traps in the deck. Uh, if you don't wanna play Morganite, you don't even have space for hand traps anyway. So Morganite is kind of built for a deck like UA. The only card that this conflicts with is the Playmaker, or, or the Player Manager, not Playmaker. And Player Manager, you can, you can like caveat that a different way, which I'm gonna show you right now. So, you know, FBG for both uh, Penalty Box and for Rollback. And just just be wary, um, Penalty Box's search is not once per turn. So if you open like 
penalty box plus echoes plus fbg you can get two searches off of both penalty boxes and because they're trap cards they can play around drill pretty effectively if you activate something like ua stadium or echoes to search and they drill you you can banish a penalty box chaining to the drill and still get your search so it's it's not that big of a deal so we go for morganite we get two summons now we can go because we you know drew a box plus stadium we get both stadiums here and that will give us um not only a search but an extra summon and we're gonna go for midfielder here because midfielder will kind of mitigate our lack of access to player manager so now we're gonna activate regular stadium and now uh thanks to our hyper stadium double summon we get to summon a midfielder search one we're gonna summon out libero spiker search two we're going to bounce one back, summon Perfect Ace. We're going to gain 500 permanently on both of our monsters, even if it leaves field. So the permanent attack gain is another aspect of why you want to sit on Stadium. Because you want to turn Perfect Ace into more of a threat than it than it is. Um, the longer that Perfect Ace stays on field, the stronger that it's going to get. So you want to kind of play a defend the castle kind of strategy, just so that if need be, you can turn Perfect Ace around into attack position and then not be scared to swing with it, right? Because it only has 15 normally. So now we go Stadium again because we got our third normal summon here. And look, we got three searches and we're still not really getting crazy card advantage. This is why UA as a deck, Stadium is necessary for it to function because imagine how little we would be getting if we didn't have this Stadium, if we didn't have the Morganite plus the Hyper Stadium summon, which um does give you three summons it, it will give you three summons because you get um two with morganite and then one more with hyper stadium so yeah uh so you can go echoes here to search uh something whatever i just searched mighty slugger it's not really like the thing about echoes is that it's not really about searching uh the slugger it's more about just getting it on field so it can be an extra interruption So now we can summon something like Blockbacker here if, if we want to use Blockbacker's effect. And then we can get uh, Echoes to search um, Howling. And in this situation, we could even set the Howling because we're already stacked in our hand with like different interruptions. So it's not even that big of a deal. But uh, let's just say, you know, uh, Perfect Ace negate one, Blockbacker negate two. And then if they try to interrupt one of them, you can Midfielder bounce back whichever one that they try to stop and either summon out libero spiker to summon another copy of the same card actually no well you, you can summon another copy of perfect case we only play one block backer so you wouldn't be able to summon a second block backer or you can uh midfielder summon out the player manager and either imperm all their monsters or you can pop a card on field and you're also going to be getting a potential book of moon with echoes so that's upwards of one two three four five if you set how late there's upwards of five interruptions um, in hand that we have access to. So this is why Morganite is actually really strong in the deck as well. And this kind of makes up for the fact that the deck doesn't have space for hand traps. It just doesn't. And because you're going to be discarding a lot with Perfect Ace, drawing two cards on our opponent's turn is going to be big. So yeah, so in this situation, we, we went for the search, but we could have did the Book of Moon. Right, summon out another perfect ace. And now we're drawing two cards per turn and we still have double summon for, for UA Stadium. So we are on the UA pack right now. We are on the UA Copium pack. It's never been stronger than it is right now. And, you know, a few of the cards in the deck are expensive, you know, like rollback, but you don't really need an extra deck. So you can play stuff like Dogmatic of Punishment or if you know any other cards that can really utilize like your extra, like, like even a uh, extra, you can play extra if you wanted to. Um, you really don't need an extra deck for the UA strategy. Um, at most, you'll probably just want to play something uh, that you can summon off of uh, like Nash Knight or um, like Rotten to pop cards or like SP, but that would be it. You can't really use much else maybe a rank four overlay 
for like Baguska or something just to stall for a bit if you're in like a bit of a sticky situation. But that's about it, right? Like, other than that, just play a bunch of rank fives. And Idaton's only here because I was playing Amazon as Warrior Chief, but I, I took her out. And <coughs> yeah, that is UA in 2024. Really interesting that Legacy of Destruction comes with this new support. And um, th this is the list that we're looking at. These are our three flex spots. I know how good Power Jersey used to be back in the day because this mixed with a Dunker or this mixed with like a Slugger with 3,800 attack is really, really big. It's really, really big damage and it can, it can be really scary. But you just have to understand that it's just, you, it's better to play the slow game, the stall game, than it is to like try to go for game or to play these like aggressive UA cards that don't do much for you anyway. So that's why these are flex spots. You could easily take these out. You could put into extra abs, like I said. Um, other UA cards like Turnover Tactics, I don't think this one's bad per se, because if you activate it when your opponent has extra deck monsters on field, it could be really effective. I just wish that it didn't require us to control two or more UAs with different names because uh, if we only open the double die and we don't have like rollback or anything else, then we're only summoning uh, like either Spiker. Yeah, actually we're only summoning Spiker and then we can't really resolve the turnover tactics. But this could be really good into like an already established board if you mix this with like a dark ruler or like a droplet so you can do something with that um playmaker is the one i mentioned earlier it is also level eight i mean you could play a little rank eight package if you wanted to because you have access to two level eights um my only issue with this card is is that it's only for going for game and not really for anything else and it's only yeah it's like you can't even use it during your opponent's turn which is like the sucky part so it's like it would have been cool if like you can uh protect some of your uas from battle or something but it's a really more it's more of an of an aggressive card and it's not terrible to play like if you wanted to play it you could but i just don't see much space for it in the deck the, the list is already tight enough locker room is one that's a little more interesting if you kind of want a magical mallet your deck so it re recycles a UA from hand, and then you get to shuffle back and draw equal to the number that you shuffled. Um, and you gain 500 as well, so this could be good for time. If you want to take out maybe like your signing deals for time, that this could be a possibility. Um, oh yeah, Exodia is a possibility in, in the list. I did forget to show that. So there is a, another level five warrior that we can search, which is the shield of the millennium dynasty and basically on it, it gets to put itself in small trap zone summon itself from small trap zone um but the, this wouldn't work under morganite this is just a hypothetical but it's just funny that you have the option to do that you can just resolve millennium cross reveal all five pieces of exodia in your deck i don't know how you're fitting all five in a ua deck but you know all the more power to you if you can Summon out Exodia Incarnate. Now it's a spell trap negate with who can do 6k uh, because you had to pay two, two, 2,000 life points to go for Shield of the Millennium Dynasty. So, cool beans. So, that's why it's there. We got Pyrite Knight, and Pyrite is another. Ooh, where are you? Pyrite is another TCG exclusive out of Legacy of Destruction, and this one was is kind of interesting. I just wish it could summon itself without needing you to bounce back a warrior you you control. But it bounces back a warrior you control that's either earth or fire, it summons itself, and then you get to summon a pyrite token to your opponent's field, and during the battle phase you get to summon an another warrior from your hand. So it basically gets to bring itself out for free. If you open battle guard echoes, you can search this, discard this, and then this can bounce back a card. And you're basically you, you're basically like not losing any resources if you search this with the battle guard echoes the only issue i have with this is that if i only have level five or higher uas in hand this isn't doing anything for me i don't mind the battle phase effect because uh of something like midfielder plus pyrite knight i could probably set up a situation where like i'm looping player manager every turn you know popping cards or imperming my opponent's field i don't think there's much more to it than that anti-spell it's limited but you know is what it is uh extra 
And it, it's really funny because my last version of UA that was like years ago before I played this variant was like triple summon limit, triple rivalry, triple goes in. And I went to locals and I still lost a dragon link anyway. <laughs> so it didn't really do me all that good. But um, I beat a zombie player, if it means anything. Uh, so that that felt good. I got a single win. So yeah, extra uh, set rotation because of chicken game and because you have two different field spells. Because Hyper Stadium is optional, your opponent can resolve Hyper Stadium, but I don't know if they will. You got Warrior Chief, you got uh, the Black Goat Laughs. This is one that I think was pretty interesting because you can discard it off of Perfect Ace and you can still used a graveyard effect to declare a monster name so maybe if you already know the matchup so the graveyard they wouldn't be able to use the effect it's the on-field effect that where you call the name so wh whichever it is that you do you can potentially stop your opponent from like getting pretty significant advantage over you this guy who was a uh, big and like at emancipator for a minute but you know never really did it. and super heavy samurai at emancipator he's pretty big and i was i was going to use him because he can give you an extra normal summon but once I realize Morganite's a card, it's just hard to play a card like this because I don't mind getting the extra normal summon, but it's only once and it could summon itself from Graveyard if you control an Earth monster, but that means that I can't really use it if all my UAs are level five or higher. It doesn't help me tribute summon or uh, get more resources on field and I'm not link summoning or anything. So summoning back in this deck means very little. I was gonna go for Mithra, as well because it, it gets you an extra tribute summon and i still think i might revisit this one either this one or like the other the rock vassal this one can book a moon monsters he requires you to play more vassals and that's that that was the biggest issue i found that i didn't mind playing like the vassals or like the idea or the idos for like the monarch support it's just a lot of them just would take up too much space and they would like like for example like land robed like he summons another one from graveyard after he's tribute summoned. And I don't know if that's even worth the, the effort. I don't mind having him in the list, right? Like maybe in like the side deck to like book a moon some of my opponent's stuff. Firestorm over here, he can, you can look at your opponent's hand. And when you have cards that can look at your opponent's hand, Mind Crush is just a crazy ass card. Like you can go for something like Mind Crush or whatever it may be. And just, you know, um, call whatever it is that you see in their hand and maybe do something with that, but I don't know. It's still a work in, it's not like this is a complete deck. This is still a work in progress. So yeah, that's why I was gonna play Mithra. Phoenix Gearblade, if we discard Gearblade for Perfect Ace, it can add itself back to hand, and then it can equip to a warrior monster that we control against 300, and then we can send it to the graveyard at the end of a damage step, and you can, every single warrior you control can get a second attack. So that can be a really significant push for game if we open this. Um, so we can discard it to negate and then if we open it we can or and then if we go into our next turn We could potentially clear the board and then swing for game and with like the attack we're gaining off the stadium It see it, it, it sounds a little bit like a win more But the fact that we can discard it kind of like the adventure token the fact that we can discard it and like still get plus Is, is kind of great if anything. I think you can play the adventure package in this list because you don't really use your effects on normal summon. Actually, now I'm not now that I'm thinking about it. You really don't need your effects on normal summon. You can discard uh, the adventure witch for echoes. Like you may need to make some concessions on like uh, ratios for like maybe field spell, FBG, rollback. Um, but it's it's definitely possible. It's definitely a possibility. I I, I think it's a. Uh, is something that we we might explore later on now that i'm thinking about it but uh yeah the space just isn't there at the moment uh battle guard cadet is funny because he can add piece of the wild and he could tribute himself and summon uh the player manager from hand but i just figured it's just too slow to bring him out and i i don't really think it's like broken and there's no real way to search him besides uh rota and small world and i don't want to go minus with small world um, and I really wish he had zero attack so we could search him off the Piri Rai map and that way we could maybe get a, like maybe it'll be a little more worth it to use him, but him, him having 50 attack instead of zero kind of killed the card for us. And the fact that it doesn't summon any of the level fives, even though it's supposed to be like for the 
battle guard support is kind of i don't know it feels weird i understand it searches feast of the wild which is great but i don't know it's all right i mean maybe in the future maybe if they like continue this battle guard um support there may be something there but for now i don't think so uh so sure the combat star it's like the evolution of uh Idaton. it's really like they're really like not great fusions but he can make all the uh monsters your opponent controls zero but uh i doubt that you're gonna fusion summon with Idaton again the whole point of playing Idaton is just to search it's not really we're not really playing like the star warrior package like seriously so maybe in like warriors 5 we could use this but in our variant not really um and then Doodle Book was interesting because I started looking to trap cards to have that have an effect in Graveyard uh, because of Perfect Ace, and I wanted to play. And this is really funny because you could banish it to search a Pankatrops. It could search any level five or higher dinosaur. So that's why I was considering Pankatrops. And I was, I played Pankatrops in UA anyway, like in the side deck. So it was like the perfect thing. Um, you could also play Fenrir. Fenrir is another good one, right? Because, it, you know, they summon themselves, they can get rid of something, or use them as tribute fodder, so it's always good. Uh, Spiritual Swords to end the battle phase could be good against Tenpai, honestly. Um, limiter Overload, uh, which is funny, it just discards itself some of the Speed Warriors, so you can discard Speed Warriors. Like, if you open Speed Warrior, you can discard it, uh, and then discard this, but... We don't care about Speed Warrior on our field. We're not Link Summoning. We're not doing anything with it. We care about it in our hand. So I want resources to hand. And as funny as this card is, it just doesn't do enough for us. So I passed over it. Salamandra with Chain. It can Fusion Summon Fire Warrior or Dragon Fusions. And I don't think I looked into all of them. But there's not that many we can go into that really make a that can really make an impact. Um, for example, Fighting Flame Dragon, we would need a Dragon Monster, which we could use the Salamandra Monster to go into it. And it, it wouldn't be a terrible idea just to have it in our extra deck just in case. But I think that's the only thing that we can go for uh, in our list, at least. Uh, we can't go for Ultimate Flame Swordsman because we need both fighting, uh, regular Flame Swordsman plus Fighting Flame. And just trying to shove the Flame Swordsman support into a deck like this is already, it, it's just already like too much for too little, um, for, for too little return. That's, that's what it is, right? So, uh, Salvation was what I was thinking about as well because you can discard it off of Echoes, discard it off Perfect Ace. And then it could search uh, Fuel Spell. And then the Crystal Beast that we add can be good um, discard fodder for Perfect Ace as well. So in case we're using multiple Perfect Aces. And it guarantees that we can get to our stadiums. So I'm not objected to the idea of playing Salvation. But I I don't know yet. Um, this is still all new to me. And then Mischief of the Gnomes. This is great because if you want to discard this, you can make all your level fives level four. So you can just normal summon out your perfect case, normal summon out your mighty slugger. And now you can still be able to trigger your stadium to search more bodies and, you know, be able to bounce your, your cards. Um, this was really better in like Infernoble or Noble Knight than it was in, uh, in anything else because you have to like, it has to be sent to the graveyard. And then it searches another bamboo sword, but unless you could send it to the graveyard multiple times, it's like there's kind of no point. Uh, Pallades was here because of Joker's Knight. Uh, Exidomar Fortress, I almost considered because it's just any two level fives. But, you know, the Armored Exceed cards would be pretty heavy bricks, and I don't want to brick on a card like this. Leo Utopia requires three monsters, so I, I never got into it. Um, Ragna Infinity was one of the ones we could summon off of our Nash Knight, and then Leo Arms. I always look at Leo Arms. I, 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 I just like Leo Arms. Um, and then Kaiki is the one where uh, if we use it, like if we have a monster that's whose attack is higher than its original attack, it can summon itself back from grave and then fusion summon a uh, level five or higher warrior monster. And I would love to play this with Battle Guard Echoes. Unfortunately, it's a light warrior instead of a earth warrior. And I know there's an earth warrior that can mill this, but I don't want to play another Earth Warrior just to mill this. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I could search this off Battle Guard Echoes and put it to Graveyard, I definitely would. Because then being able to go Idaton, search something like um, another Perfect Ace or Mighty Slugger, like, as, like, a quick effect, I'd definitely do that. And, or, like, because it's... 
it's not um it can do the like multiple turns like it doesn't banish itself when it fusion summons right i believe yeah it doesn't banish itself and um so like on the next turn that's when we can go for like the sure the combat star if you know we go into a turn three turn four scenario so if we're able to to survive then this can it can be like double the benefit of of playing it but unfortunately not yet it's the, like the lines are there it's just it's just not yet not yet um so dotscaper uh dotscaper you know because of perfect ace but again we, we want to add more resources to hand we don't care as much about summoning these smaller cards when we don't have an extra deck uh same for jet synchron i almost considered ray off of uh the double die because it just summons ray from deck for free and then you know we can go into a whole sky striker package it does it adds nothing to our ua strategy but it is a potential option uh justice springer was one i considered as well just because it has something of a quick effect like it hasn't been reprinted since like 2010 or 2011 so it's it's wording um is a bit outdated but it, it is a quick effect in the way that it works so um because it, it negates the activation it, it, it wouldn't be a trigger effect if it negated activation so that's why it is a quick effect it just doesn't say it, it just doesn't read like a quick effect uh, unless you consider like how you know the card would actually work so he can negate any special monsters effect which is pretty good um and it's i don't know it's just this random card that you say use from 5ds that like no one has bought attention to in like years uh, because there's never been a card that could like bring this out for free and now we have double die um so i don't know maybe you might see justice springer in the list at some point and here's kaiza so this is the one that would mill the kaiki right uh so if we search this if we search Kaiza off of Echoes, uh, we can summon Kaiza tribute by tributing any light or earth warrior monster. And then um, he gains attack equal to the monster that, that you tributed. And so that's why um, you can then banish a warrior, mill your light warrior, which would be your Kaiki, right? So Kaiki would be perfect target. And then during your opponent's turn, you can quick effect summon him out and um, and then when he special summoned, you could pay 500 fusion summon into your Idaton. And then Idaton, um, Idaton has an effect where he can discard and gain attack permanently. So, uh, once Idaton's on field, the next turn you can go Kaiki fusion summon into Shura, the combat star. So, I mean, like there is star warrior potential with battle guard echoes it just i don't know it's just not there uh also guilty of the d knight um if you can show no monsters you can arm some without tributing unfortunately again not an earth warrior so kind of just here this was when i was considering more of the feast of the wild package but he gets to drop one and add either a level seven dark level six dark machine uh or level five water warrior which you're only level five water warriors which matter there's like an ice barrier one there is um salvage warrior which summons out a, a tuner from hand or graveyard on on tribute summon and then there's a uh the legendary fisherman which is what this was made to search because it's it's, it's a original dm monster so it searches legendary fisherman uh red eyes or jinzo this is basically a joey card but it, it just doesn't it just doesn't work because we can't search it so there's there's no point of trying to build a deck around it uh but it is a funny card and this is salvage warrior you know on tribute summon some tuner so if we had a level five warrior tuner uh we could you know probably do some funny things with salvage warrior red layer still here we saw magna liger just just in case you know um joker's knight which is one of the best ones as i explained earlier for the ability to um summon itself then mill jack's knight and then that sets up for uh can start with Pleiades, but feast of the wild but and we could use it in ua like we could very well use this in ua just as like a tribute fodder you know like uh summon it tribute 
for one of our level fives, and then on end phase, it'll add itself back by shuffling back the Jack's Knight into deck. So you always, so it, it'll be like every turn you'll be able to bring this out. So that's why this is a, a pretty good card. Like if if level five warriors ever make it out the hood, Joker's Knight will definitely be in the list. But uh, if we're just talking about plain UA, I don't think it's a, it's a staple, it, but it is an option. Um, and then E-Stringer Big Bang, this was a TCG exclusive we got last set, I believe. Or it may not even have even been an exclusive. And it, it has a pretty interesting quick effect where it can pop another card on field if it, if it becomes level 8 or higher. It's just to get there, the, the conditions are kind of weird. Um, but it, it, it can special summon itself, level 5, Light Warrior, set up for Pleiades, and not the worst card. I do wish it could manipulate its own attack, but... It is, uh, is what it is. Uh, Slasher, right? Uh, not, not amazing, not, but not terrible either. And then Rescorpio for Goki, right? Um, the difference between UA and Goki is that if Goki were to search Rescorpio and they had any extender, they could just send the Rescorpio to the grave and start their plays. So, Maybe in the future I may uh, cover like a Goki list as well. So if, if you're um, interested in seeing the potential of what that could be, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But uh, for UA, that's going to be it. So um, see you guys in the next one.